Uh, we're talking about serving right now, and uh, we're in this amazing series, Heart and Soul. Next week, Pastor David's going to bring it back and wrap it up, and uh, we're going to go on to some new amazing stuff. But I just want to, I just want to, before I jump in, I just want to clear the air about serving. Uh, I know that it's sometimes a tough subject to talk about, and I also know that it's a tough thing to approach when you think about building the kingdom of God. That's really what we're talking about. We're not talking about the idea that, that man, like you should really like jump into the kids ministry, or I mean, that's really great, and you should jump into the kids ministry. But, but the bigger picture is building the kingdom of God. The bigger picture is stepping into whatever it is that God is calling you to do. And isn't it so funny? I mean, I'm, I'm 29 years old. I'm, I'm, other than my wife, I think I'm the youngest pastor on staff. And it's so easy for, for me to feel like insecure about my age. It's really easy for me to in, feel insecure about, about how smart the people around me are and how much experience they have. And, and man, maybe I shouldn't speak up as much. Maybe I, maybe I should just like sit down and be humble. Uh, anyone? Uh, <laughs> And I think, man, like maybe I should just, maybe I should just not go for it as much as I am. But then, you know, when I was a teenager, I thought, man, I'm just way too young. I just don't have my life together. I don't know what God has for me. I don't know what I want to do. I don't really know what my giftings are. I don't know if anybody will listen to me. I don't know. And it's, it's funny because I'm sure that when I'm 40, Things are going to hit me like, man, you know, maybe I should just take this time to like do something else. Uh, I don't know. Does anyone want to listen to me when I'm 40? And I know that there are people in this room that are in their 50s, 60s, and 70s going, man, am I useful anymore? Am I, is my time over? Have I missed it? Does anybody, does anybody want to know what I have to say? Does anybody need my help? And I just want to, I just want to clear this misconception right now. There's a misconception going on that, that your, your service is determined by your season. And I just want to share with you, somebody in here needs to hear this, that your service, your kingdom building calling is not determined by your season. Josiah was called when he was eight to be king. Moses was called when he was 80 Moses didn't start his ministry until he was 80 years old. And even he, when God called him to lead God's people out of bondage, he said, you have the wrong guy. I can't speak. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. But I want you to know that God has a place for you to serve. God has a place for you to build the kingdom. And it's not busy work. It's not something that you just, so you can have stuff to do. God has a calling and he has people that he wants you to reach with your hands and your words. God has a calling on all of our lives. So I just want, I just want to start from that platform right now of we are all called to build. We are all called to build. Have you ever had like the wrong attitude about serving? I know for sure that I have. May, I, probably none of you guys have. Just. But today we're going to talk about why it's important for us to have the right posture when we think about serving. And I know this is going to be, you know, sometimes it can be a quiet room when you start talking about serving, right? But uh, let's, preach, let's preach today together, okay? Don't just let me be up here talking by myself. need you guys to shout me down. need you guys to tell me... That's good. Preach white boy. <laughs> Whatever it is, all right? And if you're new here, um, I just want you guys to know that, that I, I appreciate if you're here checking us out. You for sure do not have to believe in order to belong. Amen. You guys are welcome here. Anybody who's welcome here, we're all just kind of learning and growing together. Uh, I have a story for you. So when I was in junior high... I had a junior high leader, and we had a youth pastor. My junior high leader uh, became my mentor. He took, a, he took a real special interest in me, and I would just hang out with this guy all the time. We would go, like, we'd go paintballing. He would just, and I was like an annoying kid. I don't know why he 
wanted to like hang out with this like loud mouth little dude. Um, but he just did. It was like an assignment from God. His name was Tim. Some of you guys remember Tim. Uh, he changed my life forever. And I'll never forget being in a car with Tim. And he looked at me and he said, are you ready to be a leader? He like didn't ask me if I wanted to be a leader. He just said, are you ready to be a leader? So anyways, at one point, Tim felt called, uh, the church was going to plant, send people out to plant a church in Fontana. You guys know where Fontana is? It's like San Bernardino area. Um, it's this hot, sticky, small city. I'm sure they're doing good now. Um, <laughs> so anyways, he felt called, and he was called. He was absolutely called to go, but of course I was, I was really, really sad to see my mentor go. So I would visit them regularly. I would spend like weeks at their house. Um, they would, you know, for some reason, maybe they just didn't have the heart to say, no, nah, we're in a different city now, homie. Like, why don't you find someone in your city? Uh, so, so because we were planting a church over there, our pastor, our youth pastor, Pastor Ed, he would talk a lot about how much he hated Southern California. He was just like, I don't understand why anybody would go. It's hot. It's sticky. It's smoggy. It's whatever. Uh, I'm sorry if you're from SoCal. His words, not mine. His words. So he would just say, man, I would never want to go there. Like, I hate it every time I, it's like, all right, Pastor Ed, like, dang, you know, be a team member. Anyways, sorry, Pastor Ed, if you're watching, I love you. So at, at one point when I was 16 years old, uh, I got some devastating news and about Tim. Tim had gotten into this terrible accident that would eventually claim his life some fi crazy fires in San Bernardino and they were right next to his neighborhood and he was just like trying to get everything out of his house, trying to help his neighbors evacuate and he was riding on this uh, motorized scooter and he wasn't wearing a helmet and the winds were just crazy and he fell over and he, and he hit his head and, and he wound up in the hospital and of course I was devastated because I wasn't sure one, if he was going to be okay and I wasn't sure if I was even ever going to like get, get down there in time. I didn't know if I was going to make it to him and his family. His family was already down there, but I thought, man, how am I going to get down there? I was just so sad. And actually his father-in-law was already down there. He was going to drive seven hours to come pick me up and bring me back there. And, uh, but before he, he did that, actually Pastor Ed, he said to me, I want to take you to your friend. So Pastor Ed left his wife and his job, and he put all that on hold so that he could drive me to a place that he hated. And he just dropped me off, and he like posted up at, at somebody's house just while I was there. And I remember after all that happens, after the process of, of my mentor passing away, and after I'm grieving and processing, I also processed this incredible thing that, that my youth pastor had done for me. It's amazing. And I thought, man, like, this guy is going to be my pastor now. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to do whatever he needs. Uh, he's going to be my pastor. And then I'll never forget that a couple years later, when I was a senior in high school, it was announced to me that Pastor Ed was going to be sent to plant a church. I'm like, dang, man, what's happening to all my youth pastors? And I thought, you know, that's fine. Like, okay, that's cool. Um, I'm graduating high school, so I'll just move on to the college-age ministry or see what else God has for me. This new guy was coming in named Albert. And I didn't know Albert. I never talked to him, so I was like, okay, that's... That's fine. And Pastor Ed sat me down and he said, I need you to stay and serve Albert. I need you to do whatever he needs you to do. And so I really had to, I really had to adjust myself and say, you know what? I am going to stay. I'll be faithful to this guy. I'll do it. Yeah, I could run a small group or, or plan events or, you know, whatever, whatever he needs me to do. So 
stay and serve Albert. So Sunday, I look for Albert, going to go up to him, talk to him, break the good news to him. Uh, introduce myself to him like, you probably already know me, but uh, I'm going to be on your team. So what can I do for you? And he said, man, that's great. You can uh, come early and set up chairs. Come at 6.30 and set up chairs. So I did not come early to set up chairs. Uh, <laughs> took a couple weeks and I, I got myself right. I had an attitude, man. I had to get myself right. And I said to him, you know what? I'm going to come and I'm going to help. Because back then we didn't have a youth room. It was just every week we set up and tear down. And I said to him, okay, I'll be there, 6.30. But you know what? I was flaky. I wasn't flaky. I was the flake. (laughs) So I'd come 20 minutes late, 25 minutes late, and I'd I'd feel so bad. I'd say, Pastor Albert, man, I'm so sorry. I'll be here next week. Next week, you can count on me. He'd be like, okay, man, that really help. Like, you know, we, we need a lot of help. Like, next week, I wouldn't come on time. And pretty soon... When I would say to him, Pastor Robert, man, I feel so bad. I'm so sorry. Like, like, I'll be there. I'll be there. It turned into, yeah, okay, that's cool, man. Like, you know, whatever. And then I would come, like, you know, a couple times I'd be there on time, and he'd, like, already have the chairs set up because he couldn't count on me. And so finally, I just, like, kind of avoided him in the hallways on Sundays because I didn't even want, I just felt so bad. I felt so bad. The Holy Spirit was convicting me, and I... I even talked to my dad about it. I said, Dad, I just, I am a huge flake. I know that, like, and I feel terrible. I feel like I want to sit Pastor Albert down and talk to him and say, man, like, like I, I repent. I'm sorry. You can count on me, like, whatever. And, uh, and my dad shared an interesting thought with me. He said, what if, instead of talking to him, you just, like, started showing up on time? And and my dad knew that I was a flake, so he said, that way, don't talk to him, because if you don't show up then, he's going to go through more disappointment. So I said, okay, I'm just going to start showing up. And I started showing up week after week after week on time. Chairs were set up, and he didn't have anything else for me to do. He just, I just like stayed there. And after a little while, he started to trust that I would be there on time. He started to trust that I'd be there on time. And you know what? I kind of begrudgingly set those chairs up for a while because I thought, man, I grew up in this church. But what I didn't realize was that God was having me set up chairs in the youth group that I would one day lead. I want to say that God has identity for you. God has purpose and destiny for you. And it is tied to what he is asking you to do in his kingdom. As a matter of fact, I'll say it this way. That you will never know who you are until you put God first. You will never know who you really are until God and his kingdom are before every other thing in your life. That's the truth. And I love my wife and she loves me and I would die for her. But she knows and I know she's number two and I'm number two. She's number two and I'm number two. You will not find out. And some some of you, I'm telling you, I know you feel empty. You feel discouraged. You feel like you have no hope. You feel like you don't have a spot. You feel like nobody cares. So why would you jump in? But let me tell you that sometimes the Actually, all the time, the jumping in happens first, and then the identity and the sense of purpose happens after that. 